Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, It's a Small World. This is the story of a strange night reconnaissance patrol that Sergeant George Kelly led against the Germans and how the sound of a familiar voice brought it to light nine years later. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Young man, here's news about an important opportunity for you. Right now, the United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and service the complex equipment that science has brought into being. The need is vital, and you can be trained in such interesting career fields as radio, electronics, radar, photography, meteorology, mechanics, and many, many others. Yes, indeed. Here's your chance to acquire a skill that will be of value to your country and help you later in civilian life, too. For full details, visit the recruiting sergeant at your nearest recruiting station today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, It's a Small World. If you've heard it said once, you've heard it a hundred times, especially when you're far from home. Run into a guy you went to school with or happens to be a relative of your cousin's brother-in-law's best friend, and he's bound to say, or you're bound to say, well, well, it's a small world, huh? Well, you don't have to tell me how small this world is. Here I'm stationed in Berlin, and I got married to this whack corporal who lived eight blocks from my home in Chicago. Can you imagine? But the story I'd really like to tell you really proves how small this world is, and it, it concerns something that happened about nine years ago. Is it that long? Well, must be. Anyhow, Della and I had us each a furlough, and we got a car so I could show Della around Europe. We got on the Autobahn and barreled along till we reached Stuttgart. We figured that we'd stop off for something to eat and then drive all night and reach Paris the next day. If you got a good car, distances are really nothing in Europe. Well, we're sitting in this restaurant, and all of a sudden I hear a voice. A voice I remembered hearing during the war, nine years ago. Kelly, hmm? is there something wrong with your soup? Huh? You've been sitting there like a statue, holding the spoon halfway between the plate and your mouth. It isn't bad, Sue. Look off to your left. See those three guys sitting at the table next to us? Hmm, so? I'll bet any amount that nine years ago, the blonde one was in the German army. Well, at his age, why shouldn't he have been in the German army nine years ago? What else would he have been doing? Playing left field for the White Sox? Shh, starting to talk again. I know it was cold when you were Klaus, but France was no tropical garden either. Why, I remember that winter. It has to be the guy. I'd know that voice anywhere. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if our fire troopers had not been captured. Oh, uh, if, if a martyr to the Middle East. <laughs> we could have broken their communication. Uh, we could have demoralized them. We might have gained time. Ah. Who knows? Isn't it bad enough I have to listen to your war stories? Do I need this? And when the parachute battalion landed, it was ambushed. The Americans had the area surrounded. They were waiting. Now, how did they find out? It was a secret, a carefully guarded secret. How did they find out? Who knows, then? Who knows? Who knows? Brother, I know. How many times must I tell you when I'm with you? I, I don't want you to sit there talking to yourself. Uh, finish the soup, huh? Werner. The other guy just called him Werner. That was his name, all right. Major Gottfried Werner. Mm, friend of yours? We were together in the same house. Yeah, when? France, back in the winter of 1944. 
Now, look, honey. They got a new captain at the Army Hospital. He's a psychiatrist. When we get back from leave, I want you to report in. Here I am under the same roof with this guy again. Yeah, it's a small world. Should I tell him why his paratroopers were ambushed? What do you think? <laughs> when I'm with you, sweetie, I don't know what to think. And how did it all happen? I got lost. I was in charge of the patrol, and I got lost. <sighs> okay, okay. You're going to have to tell me this story, which means your soup's going to get cold. Uh, do you mind if I finish it for you while I listen? Look, if that's how you feel about it, skip the whole thing. No, tell me. How did you happen to meet that guy at the next table? Forget it. No, no sweetie, I really want to know. Well, it was December. Mm, why do you put so much salt in your soup? You ruined it for me. It was the coldest December I ever saw in my life. I was in a foxhole with a machine gunner when the runner came to tell me to report back to the command post. I could have jumped for joy, even though I was sure I knew what the old man wanted. Sit down, Kelly. You look as though you could use some coffee. Charlie, fill up a cup, will you? Yeah. How is it out there? Oh, cold, Captain. I think it's going to snow. Here's some coffee, Sarge. Hey, you want to change your socks? Yeah. That is cold, Kelly. I'm trying to relieve as many of the boys as I can. I got most of the first platoon back in town. I'll have them up in the line as soon as it gets dark. I figure most of your men can get a knife in front of a fire. I could use it. Well, uh, not you exactly, Kelly. I need a patrol. Maybe I could have another cup of coffee. Yeah, sure. The battalion's worried. They think we may be just a little bit too far forward. They don't know just what kind of strength the enemy has, so, uh... Someone has to get out there, look around, and bring us back a prisoner. I think you could handle it with two men and yourself. We're not going to find any sensible Jerry soldiers drifting around in this cold. Well, the cold should make it easier for you to get in unobserved. Who do I take with me, Captain? Well, take somebody who's been back here keeping warm in the CP all day. I've got about 12 men in the other room. Mm, I better go inside and break the good news to two lucky soldiers. Take two good men, Kelly. Fellows who have been out with you before. Yes, sir. Uh, Charlie, save me some coffee. Hey, Kelly! Hey, what are you doing here, Sarge? Well, why aren't you out in the line with the old soldiers, Kelly? I know it's after Christmas, but I got two extra presents here for two lucky guys. Uh, keep away from me. I know what's going on in your mind. I ain't interested. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Yeah, be good enough to join me in the cabin study at once. We're going to talk about the present worldwide conflict and what you personally can do to end it sooner. On a night like this? I'm going to see the chaplain. What for? He isn't going to go out on a patrol with you. I went out last night. That's your fault for being such a good man. Inside. Uh, let's see. Oh, is that Corporal Van Classens? It sure is. Van, your country needs men. Don't look at me, Kelly. I'm just a boy. I want a man along who can speak some German. But I don't speak German, Kelly. I speak Dutch. Good enough. Come along, Van. This brisk, exhilarating air will do wonders for you. Both of you guys get rid of your personal stuff. Van, you got a 45, haven't you? Barrows, lend Gordon yours. Uh, do I have to carry a machine gun, too? No, we're not mad at anybody tonight. We're not looking for a fight. I'll take my M1. You two can take carbines. You know, I'm not running this army, but if I was, nobody would fight in the wintertime. I used to be such a peaceable guy, Kelly. How do I get into these uh, things? You think about it for a while, and when you're finished, come inside. Hey, Van. Yeah? You know what I'm thinking? Yeah. But look at all the war stories. We'll have to tell our grandchildren. Yeah, I should only live to tell them. We moved through the deep snow as quickly and as quietly as we could. All the time, the flakes were coming down as big as silver dollars. It's no good to try to judge the distance by counting paces because half the time we found ourselves slipping and floundering along. And then I had to pull the biggest rock of all. I took out my compass and tried to get a fix on our direction. But my fingers were so numb with the cold that I... Well, what can I say? I dropped it. It was somewhere in a snowbank, gone forever. Or well, maybe in years to come, a French farmer plowing a field would find it. He can keep it. I make him a present of it. But that wasn't helping us now. My original plan was to go wide around the enemy flank and work our way behind his lines through a patch of woods. But right now, I had no idea of where the woods were. I had no idea of where we were either. I found out soon enough. Help! Wilhelm, you saw something? Hit the ground, fellas. I thought I saw someone moving in the snow. I do not see anybody. Ah, it's your imagination. They were with the Jerrys. What were they saying, Van? Nothing. They're not sure. Hey, Kelly. Just up ahead, that big black thing. 
It's a tank. Yeah, they must have a tank in position to help out the artillery. What are we doing back here with the artillery? Shut up. We're much further back than I thought. Okay, let's grab one of these guys and go home. That'd be a good idea if we knew where home was. You hear anything? Yeah, Wilhelm, yeah. My teeth. I hear them shattering. Uh, ah, let's go inside the tank and start the motor. The sergeant said we were to stand guard outside. Do you think he will come around on a night like this to make sure? No, but... Ah, shoot yourself. I am going inside. Uh, France! France, wait for me! What was that all about, Fan? Did you catch it? We ran into a couple of real gold bricks. Who can blame them? They went inside the tank. That means we can sneak past. Let's go. Where? It's a difference. We can't stay here. We couldn't stay where we were, and any minute we could have run into the whole German army. I looked at the direction that the 88 mounted on the tank was pointing. Our line would be in that direction. Well, that was no good. I'd lose sight of that ten yards away, and we'd be lost again. If only it had stopped snowing. If only the moon had come out. Yeah, but if it did, how good would that be? We'd be able to see, but we would also be seen. We couldn't stay where we were, and we didn't know where to go. Just up ahead, what's that? Well, it looks like a house, Kelly. That's right. It is a house. The question is, is there anybody inside? Maybe yes, maybe no. What do you think, Kelly? I don't know. Looks like a big house, the kind of place maybe a battalion or a regimental commander would use for a command post. Yeah, but then they'd have guys outside on guard. On a night like this, a guy on guard would stand inside the door. Uh, maybe a gold brick like you All right, would. shut up the two of you. If there were Jerry's inside, there'd be some kind of vehicles outside. There'd have to be. Why? Is there some kind of law that says so? No, but it figures. Anyhow, I say let's go in. Uh, that suits this half-froze boy to a T. So what? If they're inside, we got our weapons ready. They'd have to go get theirs. I know. It's not that I really got anything against it, you understand, but I thought we weren't looking for a fight. Ten seconds from now, we could blunder into Jerry's and be in a fight anyhow. Well, lead the way, Sergeant. Carefully and slowly, we walked around the side of the house. There wasn't a single sign of life anywhere. As we walked around the house, I saw it was a large place made of stone, like a lot of substantial old houses in the French countryside. This must have been the country home of some wealthy guy, maybe a place that was in the family for generations. But nobody would be living in it now, we hoped. There was a door in the rear of the house. I tried the handle and was locked. Oh, well, that's a good sign. Oh, man, can't we get in there? I'm freezing. What are you going to do in the wintertime? Let's see if we can get this window. Give me a boost. No, I'll have to break it. Hey, lift me a little higher so I can raise the window. All right. That's got it. Oh. Hurry up. Look out for the yeah. gas, man. All right. Well, now what, Kelly? Now let's look around. Wait a minute. What's that? It's steps. Sergeant, somebody coming into this room. Van, Gordon, be ready to fly out that window. I'll cover you. Uh, don't kill us. Civilian, uh, speak English. Oh, oui, monsieur. Americans? Are there Germans in this house? Uh, no, monsieur, that is not yet. What do you mean, not yet? I mean, they come. They come soon. Well, where are we? Where is this place? You are two kilometers east of Clarency. Clarency? Yeah, I remember that name from the map, Sarge. The Jerry's hold it. Hey, we certainly wandered a long way from home. One thing for sure, we got to get out of here. Permit me to ask a question. Where can you go? In this storm, you will become lost. You are five kilometers, uh, say, three of your miles behind the Germans. What did you mean when you said there were no Germans here yet? About three hours ago, a German officer and two men came here. They told me a colonel would use this house for his headquarters. They said he would be here with his staff. I was told to make this place ready. When is this colonel going to show up? I do not know. At any time... Perhaps he's being delayed by the storm. Say, there's nobody else in the house now? Uh, no, monsieur. I am alone here. This estate belongs to the Baron Renard. Where's he? Dead, monsieur. Killed in the Maginot Line. He had a son who is a prisoner in Germany. Hey, listen. You hear that, Kelly? We're going to be prisoners in Germany, too, in just about one minute. This way, Major. The house is ready. Come on. Oh. Have your squad move to your quick, my boy. Should we make a break for it, Sarge? We can lose them in the storm. Uh, Sergeant, permit me to help. I can hide you. Yeah, where? Here, in the house. Hide in a house full of Jerry's, you nuts? Oh, this is an ancient house. There are rooms, passages. What have we got to lose? Go inside. Open the door. 
open the door. Uh, come this way, quickly. One moment, one moment. We opened the door of a closet. Behind it was a panel. The panel slid open. There was a passageway leading to a room behind the wall. Uh, you will be safe here, I hope. I must let them in now. Kelly. Huh? Kelly, how do we know we can trust this guy? How do we know he won't give us away to the Jerry's? You want to know the truth, kid? We don't. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, It's a Small World. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Girls, how would you like a job with a 30-day paid vacation every year? A job which pays while you learn. All right. If you're 18 and not yet 35 and have a high school education, there's a wonderful job waiting for you in the Women's Army Corps. You can learn a trade that will be of great value to you. Here are just a few of the jobs which the WAC can train you to do. Be an office manager, an expert photographer, a radio broadcast specialist, a secretary, an X-ray technician, or even a lady journalist. And don't forget, you get a 30-day paid vacation every single year. Where can a gal go to find out about the Women's Army Corps? Why, all she has to do is visit her nearest United States Army recruiting station. Believe me, girls, you'll enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of It's a Small World. <laughs> a small room. It was dark except for a pinpoint of light. I walked over to where the light was coming from. There was a small grate in the wall that separated our hidden room from the one we had just been in. I looked through it and I saw the door open. Andre and a German officer came into the room. We could hear their voices. This is the largest room in the house. Well, that'll do. Oh, no. Put my telephones in here. You, light a fire. Yes, sir. He hasn't given us away yet. Or has he? Oh, what I love to get out of here. Just everybody shut up for a minute, huh? Oh, chow. Who's got something to eat? Mm, I got one K ration. And with the cheese, I bet. What else? Good morning, Major. Ah, good morning, Hans. Mm, it is almost morning. I thought the battalion was supposed to attack last night. Well, it would have been a good time. But uh, I have received an order countermanding the attack. Patrols report the Americans are spread very thin, sir. An attack in battalion strength could break the line. Oh, I suppose the general knows what he is doing. How's the food situation? My orderly is preparing something in the kitchen. Shall I have him serve us here? No, we may as well eat inside. I wonder why the attack was called off. <laughs> They walked out of the room. The thought of food made us realize we were starving. Yet what could we do? Then we saw old Andre enter. He had a tray. He was coming toward the closet. He opened the panel and came into our little room. Uh, here is some bread and cheese hey. and a little wine. It is all I have in the house. Oh, anything. It tastes good right now. Perhaps later I can steal some of their rations. They have meat. What's the situation, Andre? I think the snow is stopping. There are 20 of them here in the house. 20? How do you figure we can get out of here? Until it becomes dark, you must stay. We will try to think of something. No, I'd better leave you now. Thanks, Andre. Thanks for everything. He opened the panel, closed it again, walked into the closet and out into the room. Just then the outside door opened and the major walked in. What are you doing in here? I, sir, I thought I would clean the major's room, sir. Well, that will not be necessary. You will not enter this room unless I summon you. Is that understood? Yes, sir. You may leave. Yes, sir. Major. What is it? There's a courier outside with orders from the general. Where are the orders? His instructions are to deliver them to you personally. Call him. So, sir. You are the honor from General Reinemuth? Yes, Major Werner. Oh, I know you. You are Heinrich Thielmann. Your father runs a restaurant in Stuttgart. What is this? Huh? What's he saying? Shh. I was sent, sir, because I was the only one at headquarters who knew you personally. These orders are top secret. I see. 
Well, Heinrich, you've had a long, cold trip. Uh, go to the kitchen and have coffee. Thank you, Major. Secret orders. Now what? Well, we shall soon find out. Man, can you follow these guys? Some kind of big deal, secret orders. Oh, that's nice. Pay attention. Well, what do they say? Manfred, uh, you must leave the room. Leave? Mm, the first sentence. You will open these with no one else in the room. No one is to know the contents of these orders except yourself. Oh. Well, I shall have some coffee. Uh, it's a deal, all right. It's hush-hush. You can't even tell his adjutant. I wish I knew what was in those orders. He's just sitting there reading. Yeah. He's reading to himself. Now he's getting up and walking around the room. Uh, Major! Yes? We have some fresh eggs and some sausages in the kitchen. Choke. All these guys do is eat. I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, call the French. Uh, he's out here on the hall. Oh. You! Come here! Yes, sir. Is there a key to this room? Yes, sir. Well, let me have it. That will be all. Yes, sir. Oh, man, it's a food. I must keep the door locked. They're going out. Listen. Hey, he locked the door from the outside. Come on, we've got at least 15 minutes. What to do what? Those orders are in the desk. We'll see if you can read them. But suppose he comes back. Maybe we'll shoot it out. Maybe something else. We'll just have to see what happens. Okay, read fast. Look, I studied German in high school. Come on, come on. Let's go, kid. As long as we went this far, let's raid the kitchen, too, huh? Uh, headquarters, general staff. Secret parachute attack. Hey. Now, wait a minute, wait. Let me try to get the sense out of the whole thing. Those are numbers, 0200. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Long time. Yeah, it's tomorrow morning. Clarency. That's where we are now. Valley behind American lines. Parachute battalion supported by infantry battalion. He's back. Jump him before he can make a sound. <gasps> Andre. Shh, 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 shh. I have another key. Kelly, they're going to drop a paratroop battalion in back of our lines to break us up in the rear while they attack us from the front. Mentions the place and everything. We gotta get out of here. I'll take these orders. No, 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 no. leave them. Don't you see? If they don't know that we know, we can ambush the pirate room. Well, how do we get back to tell our outfit? That is what I have come here to tell you. You have a watch? Ah, good. It becomes dark at five. There is a barn close to the other side of the house. At five, I shall set fire to it. In the excitement, every one of them will go there. You can then leave through the window. Make for the woods. Follow the woods northeast. That is the direction of your lines. Remember, at five. Uh, all of us had better be out of this room before the Major returns. We stayed in our little room all day. The Major worked over his papers, made calls. Guys kept coming in and out all day. We sweated out five o'clock. Could Andre start the fire with the Major on out to see it? I can tell you we were on pins, all right. Major, Major, there's a fire. The barn is burning. A uh, uh, fire? How did it stop? The barn is blazing. Good Lord, if it can be seen from the air, the plane can be upset. There will be heavy enemy artillery. Every man must work to put it out. Even you and all of us. There they go, and here we go. Come on. Right. See anybody outside? No. Okay, out the window. <laughs> okay, sprint for the woods. Now that we knew where we were and where to go, it wasn't too hard to sneak through the woods. We were extra careful. We picked our way through the trees. We were numb with the cold. But that worked both ways because the Germans who were supposed to be on guard weren't too alert either. We reached our outpost at midnight, two hours before the parachute troops were supposed to land. The commanding officer sent us back to battalion. And then they got the division commander on the phone. Yes, the Americans were waiting for us. The parachute troops were ambushed. Our attack failed. I'm sure they found out it was scheduled. But... Oh. What a coincidence. Ten years later, I run into this guy in a restaurant. <laughs> Should I tell him? Oh, Kelly, no, I wouldn't. Hey, come on, we better be going. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I just, I just can't walk out like this. You can't. Okay. Have you got a pencil? Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here you are. Now, I'll write a note for you. 
What are you writing? Uh, I'll tell you later. We'll make it good. <laughs> I think so. It is. There. Uh, waiter. Yeah? Yeah, madam? As soon as we leave, will you uh, deliver this note and a bottle of wine to the gentleman at, at that table there? Uh, the, the blonde one? Oh, yeah, yeah, madam. <laughs> All right. Okay, come on, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> sure is a small world. For me? Yes, uh, the party that just left asked me to deliver it. Hmm. Oh, good wine. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, and uh, this note, sir. A note? Once again, we were under the same roof. It's a small world. Signed, Sergeant. George Kelly. I wonder what this means. The U.S. Army needs men. Men who take a special pride in being part of a man's army. If you're a high school graduate, you can join now. And after basic training, apply for assignment to any Army school for the finest technical training. Now, if you qualify for the school you select and come within the quota, you'll be assigned to it. But however you choose to serve. It's service that means a special pride, the sense of a job well done in a man's army. Young men between the ages of 18 and 34, men who look to the future, are now choosing the United States Army. Visit your nearest recruiting station today and grow with the world's greatest army and the opportunities it offers you. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>